In this week's Q&A, I talk about affordable stub nibs, my favorite demonstrator pens, and my most tragic pen dropping story. Welcome everybody, I am Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com and I just gotta be completely honest with you, I am pretty tired today. My daughter is four years old and she was up sick all last night, so every 20 or 30 minutes my wife and I were running to her room, uh, taking care of business, doing parent stuff, so I am pretty loopy, kinda tired, so we're gonna see how this Q&A goes. I was literally in the process of like, you know, prepping Q&A and everything when all that started. Rachel is home with her now and I am here shooting q a so we will see how that goes she's okay though i think she's gonna be all right uh but you know mom mom is here taking care of her but uh, it's just been a crazy week we had snow uh more snow than we've had in the last 20 years we don't get a lot of snow here in richmond virginia uh but we got you know 18 to 20 inches here in one storm and we just don't know what to do with that so this whole week has been kind of messed up ship shipping uh packages have been delayed you know coming to us and going out and all kinds of stuff it's just been a little bit of madness um you know joseph has been off school all week uh and he's finally back today so a lot of lot of juggling around the schedule this week, so it's been kind of crazy. Um, you know, we've had some some new products coming in, nothing too crazy. We've had Keras Customs that we launched last week, trying to keep that in stock, but uh, it's been pretty popular. So, um, shot several videos on that. They've been very very well received. I'm glad glad to see that good good uh, match up there between Goulet and, and Keras. So I'm excited about that. Um, I was I mentioned in last week's Q and A I was going to be interviewing Liz Steele. Uh, to uh, post on the Q&A. We were hoping to have that done this week. The snow pretty much zonked that out. So I'm gonna be interviewing her next Monday instead and then we're gonna be posting it probably the following week to give ourselves time to edit it together and everything. So <clears throat> look for that coming out. That should be kind of fun. I got a lot of good questions. We're all excited about doing that interview. Um, let's see here, what else? A uh, new pen that we have is the Faber-Castell E-Motion. It's, uh, it's not a new pen, it's just new to us. It's an all matte black metal pen it's fairly heavy it's about 57 grams um, with a ruthenium nib so looks really stealthy uh, a bit on the heavy side a bit on the thick side so it's not going to be for everybody but we've had a lot of people asking for it uh, over the last couple of years so we decided what the hey i had one myself and i said i like it so we're going to give it a shot so those have been uh, those are up for sale now so that's kind of cool only find a medium nib though um, not the full range like most of uh, Faber-Castell stuff. Um, also, we're going to have the Lamy Charge Green coming somewhat soon. Um, I know we have the date February posted on our site, but uh, that we're expecting before too long. So look out for that. That's the Lamy All-Star uh, Special Edition that's going to be coming out very, very soon. Um, also, we got some new J. Urban brass seal symbols instead of just the letters that we've had. So we got those in. They're up on the site. Um, and then we've got uh, diamine in 30 mil bottles. We've expanded our 30 mil bottle uh, offering because it's winter time, it's cold. Uh, we've had some, you know, stock issues with the 80 mils, which is pretty normal for winter time. Um, plus, you know, diamine uh, bottles more than any other brand, I think, tend to have issues in shipping when it's when it's freezing outside. Not massively, so I don't think you should be too concerned unless you live in a really cold climate. Uh, but even still, we wanted to have the 30 mil range so that we could kind of have those available when we don't have the 80 mil. And plus, if anybody's in a freezing climate and wants to get the plastic 30 mil bottles. It's definitely a safer bet than the other ones, so um, those are kind of cool. And then uh, Noodlers, uh, they've had plastic bottles for the last couple of months. They are now officially going to be transitioning back into glass bottles. I know it's a hot mess and it's extremely confusing and we have several people that are just completely just pissed off beyond belief and I'm sorry for how the transition has been going. There's been no like smooth way for us to do it because we have mixed stock. You know, stuff's coming in, the stuff sells at all different rates and we have different quantities and stuff of the different inks. So there was really no clean way for us to say, we have glass here, plastic here, you know, whatever, because it's been transitioning in and out and now it's transitioning out and back in. So, you know, just bear with us, just please, you know, we, we are trying our best to manage it all, but basically for us to be able to check we have to open up the bottle because the box is not clear so um, you know it's it's kind of tough for us to to spot check 
any individual requests based on anchor or based on glass or plastic bottles. So that's been, you know, kind of a kind of a bummer from us from a customer service standpoint because we want to help everybody out, but at the same time, it's just too, been too much for us to keep track of. So, but they are coming back. So. Before too long, probably in the next couple of months, they'll all have transitioned back to glass. I think we could pretty much safely say. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and kick it off. So whew, having to power through this one today. Uh, pens and writing instruments. All right, so this is from Ryan Yu on Facebook. Ryan says, in a past Q&A, you talked about using italic or broad nibs when you first got into fountain pens, which is true, and it made your handwriting look decent. I've never had an italic nib, but would like to try one. Could you recommend one around $100 or less? I've got a Twisby 580 and a Vanishing Point from you. I'm also open to just getting a replacement nib for these. Also, thanks for free shipping to military members. Absolutely. We do that for anyone at uh, uh, APO, uh, you know, a base overseas. Uh, we will ship to them for free. So if you weren't aware of that, it's kind of a cool thing that we try to do. Uh, anyway, so yes, let's talk about stubs. So I mentioned uh, a couple of weeks ago that I was really into the Pelican script which I actually no longer carry anymore because it just wasn't a very popular pen. But it was one of the most uh, uh, popular ones that I first got into. I got like five of them, and I would keep them inked up with all different inks. I would test a lot of different inks in them. Um, it was really kind of cool. So the pen itself is kind of ho-hum, but the nib actually writes pretty decent. <clears throat> so it did kind of open my eyes, though, to using stub nibs uh, or italic. The term is used interchangeably, uh, and I will use, I tend to lean towards stub because italic generally means like a crisp italic, which pretty much nobody makes. They're all basically stubs. So that's what I like to call them is stubs. Uh, but yes, using broader nibs, stub nibs, I find helps my handwriting to look better. I know a lot of other people feel the same way. It kind of boggles my mind, but some people say that extra fine and like the finer nibs help their handwriting look better. That is not the case for me. I'm, I, no, that's not the case. Like when I use a finer nib, it just reveals like how like sc chicken scratchy my handwriting can really be sometimes. But the stub nib kind of like, you know, kind of covers up some of that uh, shakiness, I guess, that I have in my writing. Uh, but anyway, so let's talk about stubs. So some affordable stubs. Okay, anything $100, you got some pretty good choices there. Um, I find Twisby has several good options. A lot of their nibs, they only have 1.1. They have 1.5s in several of their pens, and they're kind of discontinuing those because they haven't been as popular. So Twisby's got a decent 1.1 that you could check out in many of their different pens. Uh, I actually find one of the best ones to be, if you are just like kind of messing around and wanting to try, the Pilot Parallel, honestly. Uh, it's 10 bucks, and um, they're actually going to be coming out with a package set uh, fairly soon, I think. Um, that's going to have all four. We, we sell all four in our own thing, but it's, Pilot's going to be doing their own kind of packaged uh, set with all four. But um, it's kind of a stub nib thing going on, and that this, uh, if you want to get into like testing calligraphy type stuff, even the Parallel is a fantastic pen to get for that because it has some very broad nibs, like six millimeters broad. Uh, so that's kind of neat. Um, uh, also, a uh, Goulet nibs, uh, to, to totally just plug my own brand here, but uh, we got them. They're number six size nibs. So they fit into a lot of other pens, especially Jin Hao's uh, and Noodler's, uh, Conrad's, Ahab's, uh, and those pens. So you can swap them onto different ones. And we have a 1.1 and a 1.5 on those that frankly i think right pretty great so uh you can you can definitely try those out for a pretty reasonable amount you get a noodler's pen or a gin house something like that we even with buying our nib you're looking at a 25 to 35 dollar investment uh right there uh let's see here what else have i got uh monteverde and conklin there's their stub nibs are a little bit uh quirky so i've given feedback to um, conklin and monteverde to let them know their stub nibs i think what uh what happened is they um, have had kind of a reputation for their nib tines being pinched tight a little bit, so you have to kind of like flex it out to spread it open and then it writes great. Um, they had that, they noticed that with their stub nib and they kind of overcorrected. So they had somebody adjusting and they overcorrected a little bit, so I've given them feedback like, now they actually flow a little too much now and the flow's even kind of breaking if somebody writes with any pressure, so you need to reel back in. It can be tough, you know, working these nibs, uh, it, it is uh, as much art as it is science. So uh, that's something that, you know, just kind of be aware of if you get into those nibs, but they are working on that. It might take a little while until it's kind of perfect, but um, they're very responsive about that kind of stuff. So um, we've seen that happening. Uh, yeah, and then uh, another one is just Lamy. You know, whether you get a Safari All-Star, really most any of the Lamy's, but you get those. 
and uh, they got 1.1, 1.5, and a 1.9. Only in the steel, so you can't get a black one, but if you get the steel one, uh, it's really not bad. You know, and the whole pen with a stub nib, you're looking, you know, 40, under 40, 50 dollars, something there around there. Plus, you are gonna have an additional nib, because only the Joy comes with an italic stub nib on it. But uh, yeah, I would check any of those out. But you also mentioned the Twisby 580 and the Vanishing Point, you already have those. Definitely those would be good options too. The Vanishing Point stub is, is really good, but we don't have them. They're not widely available yet because they've, I guess, had too much demand. Um, the Twisby 580, and I'm told it's gonna be like March before we get more. Uh, the Twisby 580, you could certainly get another nib unit for that um, with a 1.1 on it is what I would recommend. And I think you'd be happy with that. Min kind of minimal investment there. All right, Nikki uh, sent an email and said, thanks for the great videos about the two new Keras Customs pens. They definitely look like a good, unique addition to Goulet pens, and I especially like the addition of a new small American manufacturer. Yes, you compared these pens to some Kueco pens, but can you please tell us how they compare to the Lamy All-Star in Studio, Monteverde and Vincia, and the Faber-Castell Loom? How does weight, durability, grip, blah, 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 blah. I think it'd be great to see that. Okay, um, so there's two Keras Customs pens. There's the ink the big one, and the Fountain K, the smaller one. This is the one that I threw across the parking lot that you may recognize and ran over it with my car. Um, I actually threw it across the parking lot twice because the first time I did it, my hand was kind of out of the shot. So I, uh, I did it again and it landed literally like on the cap twice uh, to the point where it actually, I can see where it flared out the uh, end of the cap just a little bit, just from the pressure of the body of the pen crushing into the cap. Still functions perfectly well, writes great. Um, it did knock the nib and the feed completely out of the section. I had to put that back in there. Uh, but other than a couple of dings and scratches, it's pretty darn good. And like, it just got a couple little dings here from running over it with the car. It's actually amazingly uh, durable. So anyway, you're asking about other than compared to these other pens. Excuse me, I'm gonna cough. <coughs> so, All Star, <clears throat> let me pull that one out first. So the All-Star is an aluminum pen, so it's gonna be, um, you know, similar, sort of. It's got more of a matte finish than the uh, Keras Customs ones do. Um, these are anodized. Uh, I'm not sure about the Lamy's, honestly, if they're anodized or not. They seem to be, but I'm not sure. Um, so let's talk about them. The All-Star is definitely bigger, but it's not as heavy as the Keras Custom because it's solid aluminum. This one is, well, I guess it kind of is too, but it's, I think it's a thinner kind of, pressed aluminum or something, or, or formed aluminum as opposed to machined aluminum like this. So the All-Star is gonna be a little bit lighter. Uh, the grip is definitely gonna be different. It's got the triangular kind of grip. Oh, I don't even have a nib on this pen. Uh, it's gonna have a different grip on it as opposed to the more rounded uh, Keras Customs on the Fountain K anyway. The length is gonna be longer, so, but the lighter weight, you know, it's still gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit back heavy when it's uh, posted. This one does not post easily, or I wouldn't recommend doing it, so that one is definitely there. You get more nib options with the Lamy because it's got the italic nibs on there. Um, they do not have that with Keras Customs. And then uh, they're both kind of a contemporary design. I like the snap cap of the Lamy um, and, uh, you know, the size-wise, let me just compare to the ink for a second. The Lamy's a little bit bigger than the uh, ink. And this is the brass one, which is so friggin' heavy. And it's starting to patina on the grip, which I think is really, really kind of cool. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much that. Um, Studio, similar kind of thing. I won't talk too much about the Keras Customs ones, but the Studio uh, is gonna be fairly similar in diameter, actually. But the biggest difference is going to be the grip. The Studio grip uh, is probably the thing that I only thing that I don't like about the Studio is the grip. It's got this shiny, slick metal grip that tapers towards the end. For me, it's kind of like a poster child for slick metal grip. Uh, it's a great pen, I do like it. I love the snap cap feature of it, especially with the way it snaps on the back. It just like, it snaps very positively onto the back, very firm. Uh, I do like that. I like the kind of contemporary design on it as well, but it's definitely more of kind of a corporate looking pen as opposed to this kind of rugged machined kind of thing going on here. So, and price wise, they're gonna be fairly comparable, especially if you get this with a gold nib, it's gonna be even more expensive. So, not sure how much that's gonna really save you there. Uh, la 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 la. Durability, okay, none of, none of the pens I'm gonna talk about here is durable as Keras Customs, I can pretty much say that. On um, the Invincia, 
So this is Invincia Deluxe, but it's just similar. It's just carbon fiber on the cap as well as the body. The regular Invincia just has carbon fiber on the body and not the cap. So both screw cap. Um, the nib size is going to be a little bit bigger on the Invincia. Uh, it's going to be the same size as the ink nib. But the ink nib is kind of inset into the grip, so that is going to change the way that it feels just a little bit. You can kind of see that there somewhat, right? Same nib size, actually. Um, it's just inset into the ink. So that's kind of weird, but cool. Um, it does post, whereas these do not, so that's kind of a nice feature. A little bit more of a contemporary corporate design going on with these two. A little more professional, I guess. Maybe corporate's not the right word because I don't know how much carbon fiber and rose gold feels corporate. Uh, but a little more uh, modern, not modern, but professional. <laughs> as I make a fart noise. That's kind of funny. Um, Weight-wise, it's going to be, well, this one is just a bad comparison, this brass one. Uh, Weight-wise, it's fairly comparable, maybe even a little bit heavier than the Fountain K. In the aluminum version, brass and copper are definitely going to be heavier. The ink as well, this is a brass one because it's definitely heavier, but it's probably going to be comparable in the weight to the, uh, brass, uh, the uh, aluminum ink. Uh, yeah, and then price-wise, it's going to be fairly comparable to these as well. All right, what else have we got going on here? The Loom was the other one you asked me about, okay? So the Loom, looking at uh, this one here, it's lighter, a little bit lighter. It's got a snap cap, which I like. It is actually very durable as well. Uh, depending on which Loom you get, some of them are shiny, some of them are brushed, so it may or may not hold like scratches better and that kind of thing, but it's still gonna be pretty hard wearing. Uh, nibs are going to be fairly comparable on the Fountain K. Uh, it's definitely a bigger nib on the, the ink. Uh, and, you know, overall, I would say the Loom is probably your best bet. It's definitely a different look. It's more of a polished, again, kind of a professional look to it. It's definitely, you can tell the difference of like the German design and influence on this one. Very kind of fit, polished, uh, clean looks, clean lines and everything. Good build on it. Um, but this, uh, the Keras Customs is more rugged. Not as much of a, uh, you know, pen that you would, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it would be kind of similar. Yeah, I don't know. Good question. Kind of winging it on this one, but you can tell my lack of sleep is getting to me here. And I realize I have a meeting that's overlapping. I had to come in late today, so give me half a second here. And I have to send an email. I'm still shooting Q&A. Jenny, you might want to cut this out. I don't know, it's up to you. I'm still shooting Q&A. Can we push it back? There, boom. Taking care of business. All right, that's about all I have on the Curious Customs. Connor C. on Facebook says, I'm a student pilot and, a spe and typically use the Fisher space pen in the cockpit, mostly because of the durability and the reliability. Are there any fountain pens that are made for pilots or would be better? Thoughts on the Quaco Sport for this use? Thanks for the videos and entertainment. You're welcome, Connor. That's pretty cool, student pilot. Um, well, you could use a pilot pen. Ha, ha. Yeah, uh, that's a little obvious of a joke, but um, no, I mean, Honestly, I don't have like any specific pens for student pilots. Uh, it may surprise you, I don't know. But um, the one pen that I've been recommended specifically by a commercial pilot says this is my favorite pen. I love it. It's so reliable and works like a charm. Uh, is the Platinum Preppy, actually. Sent me pictures and video and everything of how well it works. The challenge you're going to have as a pilot is, you know, you're changing altitude a lot, clearly, every time you fly. It's really on the ascent that is going to be your biggest issue. You may have noticed this in your own pen use. Um, it's going to be worse, worse, uh, in terms of leakage and spilling and stuff like that, if you have a pen with a large ink reservoir that has a big air bubble in it. So if you keep your pen pretty full, you're pretty much going to be okay. But if you use a pen with a smaller ink capacity, you're pretty much going to be all right. So anything that's a cartridge converter pen, you're pretty much going to be safe. I very rarely hear of any cartridge converter pen being an issue. So yeah, Kaweco definitely could work. If you're eyedropper converting your Kaweco, then you might have more of an issue because it's got a larger ink capacity and you you know you can get a clear one or an ice blue you know ice sport or whatever that has a clear body and you can see your ink level that'll help but if you can't see your ink level you don't know how much air you have in there you might get a little bit of leakage uh, but honestly i find if you keep the pen pointed up nib up when you're flying 
you're pretty much not going to have an issue no matter what pen you're using. So Platinum Preppy works really well. It's super cheap. So if you lose it or break it or whatever, you're not going to cry. Um, it can have a larger ink capacity. You got to watch out for that, but um, you can use cartridges with it uh, or a converter. And then also the cool thing about it is the cap seals really nicely. So um, it uh, will, will stay sealed up well and it's only a couple of bucks. So that one's kind of cool. So I would recommend that one for sure. Um, and then all, honestly, you could use anything else. You could do Lamy Safari, you know, Twisby, whatever. You could pretty much use whatever you want. You don't have to necessarily be so careful with the pen choice as much as you do with kind of how you use it. And I have several other videos about flying with pens um, as well. So that is, uh, I think you'd be in good shape there, Connor. All right, at Physics Valkyra tw on Twitter, what are your favorite demonstrator pens? Okay, I alluded to this one in a little intro here. Favorite demonstrator pens? I have several, um, so I will show them to you now. Honestly, I do like demonstrators. I do like being able to see my ink and see it kind of sloshing around. I totally get the appeal. I like being able to take my pens apart and all that. Um, when it comes to demonstrators, as a brand, Twisby's got the lock. You know, they make pretty much almost everything demonstrator except for the discontinued Micarta and the classic, but everything else you can pretty much see what's going on inside your pen, which is kind of cool. So my favorites of theirs, out of all the pens they make, I do like the VAC 700, but I don't use it all that often. The VAC Mini is pretty cool. That's their newer one. I am digging that pretty hard. And then the Twisby Eco as well, I found to be very reliable. So I do like that one. Um, Pilot Custom 74 in blue. It's still a demonstrator, even though it's blue. You can see it going on, it's very translucent. All of the Custom 74s that we have in the US here anyway are demonstratory in some fashion. They do make a clear one, but they have a smoke and a blue and a purple and orange, all that kind of stuff. Um, that one I love. The way that it writes, it's just my favorite pen. So uh, I do like that one a lot. And also, don't overthink it. You can go with a Coeco Sport or a Platinum Preppy. A couple of bucks, hard to beat. And then on the complete opposite end of the spectrum, I have the Visconti Opera Master, which I think is super cool. The ribbon that goes through this thing is just awesome, and I love seeing the ink slosh around, and the double ink reservoir is just really kind of cool. So that is neat as well. A little bit more expensive, you know, than the Preppy, but uh, that's okay. You can either get a whole, you know, suitcase full of Preppies, or you can get one Opera Master. So it's really up to you. It's kind of ironic, I just dropped that pen as I'm going to be telling my pen dropping story a little bit later. Okay, so that's that. Nothing too dramatic to talk about in this one, but uh, that's some of my favorites. All right, Erickson T on Facebook says, I'm anticipating working in some more rugged settings, be it a foundry, construction sites, and machine shops. I always carry a fountain pen with me even if I don't anticipate using it. I already plan to get a Keras Customs Fountain K. I mean, come on. Yeah, your machine shops, you got to get that pen. Uh, but I wonder if there might be more affordable options, particularly those that might come with a fine or extra fine nib. Uh, cool. So I already mentioned some earlier in this uh, video, some of the ones that compare to the Keras Customs. I will say, yes, some like the brass and the copper get up there pretty good. But uh, for what you're getting, these like solid machined American made pens, the, I think the, the prices are fairly reasonable. So to get something much lower, you're gonna be compromising on something. You're not gonna get anything solid, machined, anything like that, any cheaper. So you're gonna be making trade-offs. I do think the Fountain K is a phenomenal pen, especially if you get the aluminum version, it's like 75 bucks, very, very reasonable. Um, but anyway, some comparable ones if you want, uh, something comparable. The Met Pilot Metropolitan, maybe not these colors. Uh, <laughs> These are the bright, some of the brighter colors. Uh, make it made fun of at the machine shop if you carry a bright purple pen, but maybe not. I don't know. Hey, uh, so definitely Metropolitan. It's only 15 bucks. Still metal. Still quite durable. Not quite as durable. I don't know what happened if I ran this over with my car. It might hold up. I don't know. I should really try that. Um, <laughs> new test. New series. Will it hold up over Brian's tire? Uh, but yeah, that could definitely work. Jin Hao, big honkin' pen. This is a 159, this is their biggest one. But a uh, very durable pen, very cheap as well, so you could definitely make some headway on that. Um, carry that around, bang it around a little bit, not worry too much. Lamy Safari is plastic, but still quite durable. You can toss it around a lot. 
And the one, this one, especially the charcoal, I think is really cool, kind of stealthy, durable. So I would take a look at that. And then the last one is the Faber-Castell Loom, actually. Um, I know I'm kind of mentioning a lot of the same pens as I did earlier, but uh, maybe not the piano black finish one, but they make some more like matte colored ones that are pretty cool. These are pretty durable. And the extra fine nib on these is one of the finest nibs that I've ever found uh, on, a, on a, especially a German made pen. So that is pretty cool if you like the, the fines and extra fines. That's why, as much as anything, why I mentioned those. And the Metropolitan too. Uh, very fine nib on that fine. There you go. I'm just kind of plowing through these questions today. This might be kind of a shorter video today. All right, let's talk about some ink. I have one ink question. So this is from William S. on Facebook. What ink glows in the dark? I can't seem to find any or think of any. I find that some require a black light, but none that just glow when you turn off the lights, sort of like the you know, stars that you like stick on your ceiling kind of thing. Rachel has those in her like childhood bedroom at her parents' house. And it always weirded me out because she stuck those all over there. And now that Rachel and I are, you know, been together for years and years and years, that's, that's the uh, room that we stay in when we stay at her parents' house. Uh, but she still has all those stars, glow in the dark stars stuck up on her ceiling from when she was a kid. Uh, and then, I have had terrible vision ever since I was a kid, so I always had glasses or contact lenses. So whenever we stayed there, I never saw the stars because I would always have my glasses or contacts or whatever, and by the time I would lay down in bed, I had my contacts out, and my eyesight was so bad, I couldn't see even the big stars. You know, I had terrible vision. My, my vision before I had it corrected was about 2375. That's how bad it was, almost legally blind without correction. So uh, I did have LASIK a number of years ago though, three, f almost four years ago now. Wow, wow, time flies. Um, but anyway, once I got LASIK, I laid down for the first time and that was one of the, the memories that I, that sticks out to me the most about uh, when I had LASIK was that I could see the glow in the dark stars on Rachel's bedroom. So kind of funny. Anyway, what the heck was I talking about? Ink, um, yes, so that's what I think of. Like there's some physical like uh, pigment or property that is glowing. You know, it's like you put it under a lamp or a light or something like that, it absorbs it somehow, and then you turn the lights off and it glows, kind of that greenish, whitish glow. Uh, there is no fountain pen ink like that that I'm aware of, and I'm aware of most fountain pen inks that exist today. So uh, the only thing like that that I've ever seen is an ink that J.R. Vaughn had a few years ago. I don't know if they still make it. I think it was discontinued in the US. They probably still make it, but it was a calligraphy ink. So it's a dip pen ink. Too thick to use in a fountain pen, probably because I would imagine the kind of pigments they need to glow in the dark like that can't be ground fine enough to function in a fountain pen. Though, I don't know, that would be kind of cool if it did. But I would not recommend getting that particular ink and using it in your fountain pen because it is not intended for use in fountain pens. Um, but that's the only one that I've ever seen. That particular J. Bond glow in the dark ink um, that I've ever seen that has that greenish kind of hue uh, to it, like the glow-in-the-dark stars. Uh, the only thing that is made today is kind of what you alluded to, is the stuff that's uh, UV reactive. So Noodler's Blue Ghost is the most obvious one. It's an invisible ink that glows under black light. Um, and then there's some other ones that have UV properties to all Noodler's basically. Um, not all Noodler's inks do them, but pretty much all of the UV reactive inks are made by Noodler's, seems to be kind of more their thing than anybody else's. They've got maybe a dozen colors that are UV reactive. You can see that in a filter on our site, Blue Ghost, Firefly, the Dragon Cat inks. Several of the highlighter inks seem to have those properties. Some other ones too, so um, you can check those out. But yeah, I hate to be a total letdown on this answer, but uh, yeah, there really isn't any. So unless somebody comes out with one, you're pretty much just gonna be using a dip ink or some other like special, I imagine there's some kind of like highlighter pen or something like that that has a feature, you know, just look in the kids' aisles at, uh, at you know, the office supply store. All right, I got a paper question. This is from Ty W on Facebook. Ty says, I love cream or ivory paper instead of white. I love the dot setup. Is there a staple bound notebook that has ivory colored paper or just white? I've even compromised on dots for regular lined. 
So I did a little searchy search on GoulayPens.com because we have facets on our website, so you can literally like pick all the different options you want, and it'll narrow down your search. And I looked for stable bound notebook, ivory paper with dots, and I got a big old goose egg. Nothing, nothing at all. Um, the only staple bound off white that I even have is Rhodia Premium, and that's with lined paper. So if you're willing to compromise there. There is lined. But I wasn't sure if you meant staple bound in terms of like you tear it off and that's why it's staple bound or staple bound like side staple bound. Because a side staple bound, um, I got nothing. The Rhodey Premium is the only thing I've got. Now there is some stuff that's like white, but it's a little creamier than that's not like quite Rhodia, Clairefontaine, pure white. You know, Midori's refills are kind of like that, but as a standalone notebook, I don't know if those are particularly what you want, especially because they're kind of an odd size, made to fit the traveler's notebook. Um, so that could be an option for you. Um, if you're not married to the staple bound aspect of it, Leuchtturm does have several journals that have an off-white dot grid in it. So that could be an option. Really depends on where you're gonna wanna kinda compromise because basically I don't have everything you're looking for here in a notebook, a stable bound off-white dot. So you're gonna have to compromise somewhere. You're just gonna have to kinda choose where it is. But the nice thing is on our site, you can pick and choose and change facets and stuff like that. And it'll narrow your search down based on the different parameters. So you can just look on the left side, go to, go to the paper at the top and then notebooks and then it'll have all your facets on the side. You can just pick and choose and, uh, and give it a shot. Got a business question here from Sam F. Have you guys heard anything about the rumored Visconti Homo sapiens dark age? Dan Smith shared a picture of it and it's got me drooling. Yes, Dan Smith did uh, repost something on Instagram uh, from someone else who's like a Belgian retailer or somebody like that, somebody I'd never heard of, um, but that kind of leaked it, so. Uh, I knew about it, but I wasn't supposed to talk about it yet. But now that it's been leaked, I've gotten the okay to talk about it. So uh, as of the time that this video actually is published, you should have already seen that we put something out on it and it's up on our website. So you can go check it out, sign up for the email notification list. We're not actually gonna get them until March. So you got a little bit of time to freak out and save up your pennies and sell your you know, unused dog toys or whatever. <laughs> to try to save up your pennies for that pen. It's gonna be the same price as the bronze and the steel age Homo sapiens. So it's gonna be in both versions, the full size and the uh, oversized maxi, whatever you wanna call it, and the midi size, the smaller one. Um, but it's a black oxide finish and then it has a ruthenium nib. So it's all stealthed out. The writing on it does pop a little bit, just a little bit. It's kind of like a white lettering. So. Yeah, I probably could have done with a black lettering. Like personally, if it was like completely stealthed out, might have been a little better, but I ain't gonna complain. I think this pen is friggin' sweet. So I have seen them in person. We did get samples for like a couple of days and then we had to send them back. So we have a blog post and a video that's gonna be coming out. We took all our own pictures. Um, so that is all supposed to publish, I think on Monday. That was originally supposed to be like, oh, we'd be the first to announce it, it'd be so cool, but it got leaked, so now we're not the first. That's always kind of a bummer, especially when we do all that work to be like, oh man, we could come out with it first. Nope, somebody else stole our thunder, but that's all right. Um, so we've got that uh, that will be coming out. So it'll be all the same nib sizes and everything that, uh, that'll be on the other pens. So it should be kind of cool. Um, and they are, they're just sweet looking pens, sweet looking pens. So if you're already looking at Homo sapiens, now you have to look a little harder at which, uh, which finish you would want to get. Uh, I think that pretty much covers that. <clears throat> I'll cover more in the video that'll come out. Uh, and then the last question I have, wow, I really am gonna finish up early today. Uh, this is a troubleshooting question from Kate B on Facebook. I've dropped a couple of pens on sidewalks when out sketching and bent the nibs. How might I try to repair them? Well, Kate, uh, depends on what you're talking about. Um, if it's a thousand dollar pen, it would probably be worth getting it repaired, sent to a Nibmeister or something. I doubt that's what you're talking about because you're probably not sketching with really expensive pens. You're probably somewhere more in the vein of a Lamy Safari or Koweco Sport kind of thing. Uh, the challenge is uh, when you bend a nib, to bend it back and have it write well uh, is pretty challenging, actually. It's one thing to like smooth and kind of fine tune your nib if it's already aligned well and, and writing properly. 
or for the most part, that's that's one thing to be able to do yourself. To be able to fix it is really difficult. That's kind of like if you got in a car accident and being able to fix your own quarter panel, like being able to pound and hammer it out so it looks good again. It's probably about that level of knowledge and practice and tooling and stuff like that that you would need to have. So it's really not something that's very practical for most people to be able to repair their own nibs. I mean, you could give it a shot because you've got nothing to lose at that point if it's already ruined. But um, yeah, it's not something that's like, oh, if you drop it and bend your nib, just bend it back and it'll work perfect. Mm, not most of the time. Um, so that's the, that's the bad part of it. Uh, the good part of it is, though, most pens that you could use for sketching, a lot of pens that I hear from other people from sketching, the pen itself is usually cheaper than getting it repaired anyway. I mean, a good nibmeister, if they're repairing a nib, if it's truly like you drop it and the nib is like burnt like that, to fix that, you're probably looking $60, $80, you know, easily, depending on the nib and the, how bad it is. So it's going to be kind of tough to justify that. It really is going to depend on the price and the importance of the pen. Uh, if you've got something like a Lamy Safari or Kaweco, it's definitely easier for you to just replace the pen than it is to have it repaired. Um, it's probably maybe worth more of your time, too, if you're trying to do it yourself. But it's up to you, unless you want to make it a hobby. Um, I would say that uh, the Lamy Safari or you know Vista All-Star, something like that, is a good choice because if you do damage the nib on that, you don't even have to replace the whole pen, assuming the rest of the pen functions well. If it's just the nib, you can swap the nib out on that bad boy. For 13 bucks or whatever, you can get a new nib, and it's, it's good, good to go. So uh, that is the good news. You, know, you could also get a pen like the Pilot Metropolitan, which the whole pen is $15, so if you drop that one, no big deal. You could replace the whole thing. I hate to say that and hate to have kind of a throwaway culture like that, but it's just the practicality of it. Um, if, you know, a lot of these companies, they, um, you know, the labor that would be involved in fixing these things would cost you more than just a whole new pen. So that's kind of the reality of it. But um, I would recommend checking out the Metropolitan, the Lamy, uh, maybe the Kaweco. Um, there's definitely other brands that would kind of be in that, you know, 20 to $40 range that you know, if you drop it a couple of times a year and have to replace it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, I would definitely not recommend taking out your gold nib pens into that kind of situation. Um, but that's, that is kind of it. So wow, 37 minutes here and I've gotten to the end. That's crazy. So this is gonna be a very short q and I really plowed through them. I had nine questions, but just not super complicated questions this week. So I'm sorry if... Uh, you were hoping to get a full hour. I know that's kind of my normal deal. This is more like the, the Q&A of the old days where it was more like a half hour, 45 minutes. Uh, but anyway, that's it for now. I'm probably gonna go take a nap. I'm exhausted. <laughs> but I hope you've enjoyed this Q&A anyway. Um, for the question of the week this week, I would like to know what is your most heartbreaking pen dropping story? Uh, you know, Kate kind of inspired me there. Uh, so my story, actually, I totally was a tease in the beginning of the video because I really don't have a great pen dropping story. Probably the most interesting pen dropping story was the Keras Customs one where I threw it across the parking lot. Uh, that's really that's really the worst I've ever had. I, for as many pens as I have, been using them solid for over six years, six and a half years. Um, I've never had a significant drop. Never dropped and damaged a nib, personally. I guess maybe I'm an anomaly, but I think I don't think it happens to everybody, you know, but it definitely happens to enough people where it's kind of something to kind of watch out for. But I'm not a very accident-prone person in general. I, I tend to t be pretty cautious with my pens. I've definitely dropped some before, but they've always been capped. I've never really dropped them like nib out where burn, it kind of goes right on the nib. So I have no super dramatic, fascinating story. The worst of it's been like, oh, it's, I've kind of fumbled and it slid off my desk and fell on the floor. Mm, pick it up. Oh, okay, it's fine. So nothing really exciting, honestly, except for the Keras Customs where I whew, chucked it. And I chucked that thing. That thing flew about 70 feet, something like that. I don't know. That was fun. So that's all I got for this week. So let me know in the comments what's your most heartbreaking pen dropping story I've definitely heard of some tragic ones, like somebody bought, we had a customer that bought a Visconti Opera Master and whew, nibbed down on it. No biggie, it's just a $350 replacement nib. Oy! 
So that's a situation where it might make more sense to repair than replace. Had somebody else that had a uh, Homo sapiens, uh, the, one of the bigger one, the vac filling one, had it in an ink bottle and went to fill it, first filling ever, they pushed the back, they, it slipped out of their hand and bang, right into the bottom of the bottle. <laughs> Ouch. I've never had that happen, but I could see how it might possibly, um, yeah, and it damaged their nib. So that was a big bummer. So we, we try to work, work with people on stuff like that. But that's just, you know, it's a, these are physical objects that you got to watch out for. So anyway, um, if you uh, want to check out any of the stuff that I talked about here, boy, I showed a ton of pens this, this time. Um, but if you want to check out any of this stuff, check them out on guillepens.com. Everything that I mentioned here is all stuff that I carry or have carried at some point. Um, so you can check that out. If you have any questions uh, for next week, I didn't get a ton of questions this past week. I don't know what it is. I think our Facebook reach is not as far as it used to be. Facebook's been tweaking their algorithm. And basically, unless you pay to boost your posts, only a couple people see it. Even though we have a fan base of 15,000 on Facebook, when we post something, it might only be three or 400 people that see it. So that's kind of a stinky situation. Um, but uh, unless we pay for every post that we do, so that's kind of a bummer. But anyway, that's where a lot of our comments used to come from is Facebook. So I'm having to pull a little deeper now. So if you are watching this on YouTube or whatever, please, please ask some questions because the better questions I have, the more I can babble on forever. Uh, that's it. Subscribe to YouTube if you haven't already. Uh, I promise to have it more together next week. This week has just been a completely bizarro situation. And, you know, being a dad, running a business, having snow, all this stuff, sometimes things just kind of fall apart. So I don't think this Q&A will go down in the history books as one of my best ones ever, but thanks for showing up and watching anyway. I really do appreciate it and getting to spend time with you guys. So hope you have a great weekend, good rest of your week, and right on.